Hello, and welcome to the Physique Development Podcast. If you are an avid listener, we would love if you could go ahead and leave a review for us. It should only take less than five minutes. And if not, we would love for you to go ahead and subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube so that you can be notified on Mondays when we release new episodes. But today, we're specifically going to talk about how Alex lost 20 pounds in four days and how you can too. Or... Wait, that doesn't sound right. Is that what we're talking about today? <laughs> I mean, that's what we're talking about today. Okay. Um, I did lose 20 pounds over a four-day period. I think that this is the the dream of, of many individuals who are in that crunch time to go on vacation. They're like, I need to fit into this bikini ASAP. That physique development difference. Yes. <laughs> and um, I will say that the approach that I took in terms of having lost that much weight um, would not be advised. And I can assure you, losing that much weight... That that quickly is not how you'd want to feel going into a vacation. Yes. Okay. You've got me. We're not going to teach you how to lose 20 pounds in four days, but to talk about kind of what happened that caused Alex to lose 20 pounds in four days and what we've been doing since then to get him back to a normal weight. Yes, you heard it. We wanted to get his weight <laughs> back up. He wasn't just wanting to stay at that 20 pounds under there. So let's go ahead and talk about what happened. We got sick. We got very sick. We got the freaking flu. And uh, to give you some context here, this started around September 20th for Alex specifically. That was on a Tuesday and lasted through October 7th for me personally. So it took a big chunk out of us for about two weeks of navigating through this sickness. Yeah, I, I was. I felt better earlier than you. Mm -hmm. I would say like it, you said September 20th. I would say I probably felt better like at the very beginning of October, like the first day or second day of October, maybe is my guess. Um, but it was, it was a, a long experience as a whole. I think that, um, I haven't been sick like that before. I haven't had, um, I guess I haven't had the flu like that or, or to that degree ever before. The The first couple of days were were very challenging in terms of just how sick I was in terms of the, um, cold chills, the the hot and the cold, the aches, the lack of energy, the, <laughs> I mean, just feeling really crummy, nausea. no energy, no energy, nausea, um, the whole nine. Yeah, a bad cough as well. It was something else. So let's go ahead and talk about kind of how it started. So on that Tuesday is when you said you first started feeling bad. How did things progress by Thursday and then into Friday? Because Friday was probably one of your worst days. Yeah, so really, it probably started like right when we got back um, from Green Bay is that my weight can I, I, I ate normal while we were in Green Bay, if not like in a slight deficit. Um, but the few days after we got back Monday, Tuesday into Wednesday, my weight just continued to climb. Um, every day I was adding like two pounds and just feeling very watery and not being able to sleep well. It was kind of like my central nervous system was in overdrive before I really you know, became sick. Like my body was just not allowing for me to rest. Um, it felt like I was just like, taking in so much caffeine and so much stimulants. And I, I wasn't, I wasn't actually taking in any caffeine because I was like, why am I not sleeping well? And then that quickly turned into uh, that Wednesday and I called it like a half work day because I was like, I can't even look at my screen anymore um, and went down to the basement and just you know, slept for the rest of the day. Um, but the next day, that Thursday is when the um, the nausea, the um, like the body aches and the hot and cold, the fever, all that kind of kicked in. And so then that Thursday you know, through, gosh, probably the next Thursday, um, was the exact same. I, I have very rarely, like Sue and I have been together for five years now and she's never seen me sick like that. Normally when I'm sick, I am way too far, like I'm way too hard headed to actually take time off. And this was one of those scenarios in which the first couple of days I didn't even question taking the time no, off. No. Like it was one of those things where it's like, I can't, I can't work. So it's a matter of, I just have to get better. And normally in those situations, if I give myself one or two days, I generally think it's just like normally from just being run down. And so I'm like, I give myself one day, I give myself two days and just let my body rest. I'm normally good. But in this scenario, <laughs> I gave myself the one day and then the second day, and I just kept progressively getting worse and worse. And none of the symptoms were really improved 
moving. And so it really blindsided me in terms of like how sick I was type situation. Um, and as you guys can imagine within the, the nausea, um, the, uh, just the lack of appetite in general, this is where the, the stemming of the loss of 20 pounds originated over the, the four day period of not being able to really eat anything. I don't want to get too far ahead of us from a, a, a you know, conversational standpoint, but, um, that is the, the root of the 20 pounds of body mass loss. Um, I can assure you that after losing that much weight, I did not love how I looked. <laughs> <laughs> or how. Yeah, I did not love how I felt. I did not love how I looked. Um, losing weight that quickly is not a, a good look, not a look that you're really, you know, mm -hmm. striving for type situation. Um, I looked like a, what did I call myself? I kind of just a soggy sock, honestly. <laughs> I looked like a, a little bit of a, soggy sock. Yeah, a wet sock that just came out of the wash that hasn't been dried yet is exactly how I would define my body. Yeah, you know, um, I was just about to tell you that when you had taken off like your sweatshirt, I was just about to be like, oh my gosh, is that my husband? Or a or soggy, soggy sock. sock. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly how I felt as well. Um, so yeah, I, I do not advise getting the flu if that's, if, if you are. <laughs> that was on your checklist. Yeah, Don't do it. <laughs> if you were aspiring to get the flu this year and really wanting to go all out, um, it's not worth it. So. Yeah. Well, the thing that was so hard is that I also haven't been sick like that in probably like 10 plus years. Like it would have to have been when I was a lot younger that I've been sick like that. And w since we've been together, Alex probably hasn't seen me like sick once. No. There was one time that I took one day off and then the next day I was I was back to work and it was a day I was just all gross and needing to sit on the couch and blow my nose. But outside of that, like I don't think you've seen me down at so. all for any sickness. And so I didn't know he was feeling as bad Tuesday through Thursday because like you said, it wasn't even a question that he was going to work and he is very hard headed. So he had just gotten to work. And on Thursday, we were getting out of the house and I put on like the sporty cute outfit, put myself together. We're about to leave. And I look over and Alex is literally dressed in his like suit jacket, button up shirt and nice pants. And I'm like, oh, I thought we were just like, just going to grab something to eat. And he was like, I feel absolutely awful, but I'm tricking myself by getting dressed. <laughs> yeah, this is a, a trick from my mom that she used to tell me when I was younger is that you just need to take a shower and put on your best clothes and you're gonna feel better. And so I still try to do that as an adult. Um, I can assure you that it did not fend off the flu. <laughs> sometimes it does work for <laughs> It him, does work sometimes. For sure, in a yeah. normal work day, but in this circumstance, yeah. it wasn't really doing the trick. And so we had gone and grabbed something to eat. And like, like you said, like we really have been struggling with burnout this whole year. And so we have just kind of been like, all right, we have to push, we have to get through this week and then we'll give ourselves some rest. And when we got back on Thursday and he was like, I, I need to go change and go to the basement and just be out for the day. I was kind of like, oh man, he's actually not feeling well, like at all. Cause it takes a lot for him to take time away from work. And then on Friday we had Fridays are normally like our our meetings that we often have together, that we have a lot of meetings that we have to get through. And so Friday comes and he's like, no, I'm sick. And again, for him to admit that was huge. And so he just started the day in the basement. And I was like, well, I guess we just got to get through these meetings and make sure Alex feels okay. I'm thinking if he rests, since he rested Thursday evening, if he rests all day Friday, all over the weekend, Monday, he'll be good to go. Um, he was not good to go Monday and no. neither was I because on Friday I was all up in his face the whole time checking on him, making sure he had medicine and not to say that you were pathetic, but you were kind of pathetic, pathetic because yeah. you were just so sick. Like yeah. I had never seen you in that place of you were just laying there and you're like, do anything to make me feel better. Yeah. You, We like took the humidifier down there. I had medicine down there, had timers on everything, got like everything I could from the store. Um, my mom had brought stuff over just to be able to get things and be proactive and just didn't feel better at all the whole day. And the whole day I was like, what can I make you? to eat. And he was like, absolutely nothing sounds good. And so then the day finishes up Friday and he's like, how do you not feel? How, how are you still feeling good? And I was like, oh, you know, just, you know, I'm, I feel fine. I did, I did not feel fine. <laughs> and so Saturday morning, we both wake up and we're like, we're done for. 
And so we were like, all right, let's just go ahead and call it here. Let's take the rest. Let's not work. Let's let everyone know what the situation is. And if we really prioritize rest over the weekend, we'll be good to go. That didn't happen. <laughs> and I think that, uh, you know, and it was a, a huge step forward for me in terms of being able to take the actual work days off. Mm -hmm. um, because in the in the scenario in which with us working with one-on-one -on -one clients, you know, when work is is not done on the day that it's designated, um, there's no one to pick up the slack. It's just, I have more work to do tomorrow. And then if I miss two days in a row, then I have so much work to do over a three day or on that third day type situation. And so it's very difficult to take those days. And I know as a, a young, um, online coach for, for myself, I was, I was so nervous and so scared of having to take days off because I thought clients would cancel and they would be like, Oh, you're, I want my money back. I want a refund because you're not, you know, checking in with me today or you're late on getting my training over to me. Like I was so nervous that that would ever happen to me. And I know that over the past, you know, two or three years, this has happened maybe twice over that time frame. This was one of them that I had to take, you know, serious work days off. I was late on getting training over all those things. And I can assure you, no one canceled. I'm sure that some people that maybe were newer that mm -hmm. haven't that hadn't been working with me for some time, maybe were a little frustrated of like, yo, I, I just got started. This is my second training phase. This this dude's late on getting all this stuff over. This dude sucks. Yeah. And I'm sure that some of them had that feeling. And I, I hope that I have resolved that with any of you that have felt that way. <laughs> um, but I can assure you that, I mean, I would say 98% of, of my clients um, were painfully understanding. Uh, some of them skipping the check-in, just wishing me to feel better, <clears throat> all those things. And so I, I encourage you, <clears throat> if you're a, a, a young coach who maybe has the same fear that I once did, provide incredible service, really care about the quality that you're providing on a day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month basis with every single one of your clients. Don't have your favorites. Don't have, this is, this is part of my roster. This is the other part of my roster. Everybody is a favorite. Everybody's getting the same quality of service. And when these scenarios happen, you're going to be able to have a, a community around you who supports you and understands. If, you've, if you're if you in the opposite where you have these favorites and you have some of the clients you're not giving as much attention, that's where you're gonna have an issue when these type of things come up. And they're gonna be like, what the heck, man? I, I just wanna have you know what I paid for type situation. I had zero of that. Mm -hmm. And it's because of the, the focus on overall quality and just caring for each ind individual. Um, and I, I, I have so much pride in that aspect aspect of things. Yeah. Um, that's a side tangent, but no, I, I think it's important to talk about because you also, you set the precedent so that it becomes something that it's the exception, not the rule. It's not like you're always late on work. And this is another thing that someone has to wait for. It is like clockwork. You are showing up for the service that you've promised this person. And so when we do have things pop up, which is seldom that we let it affect our work or we, it, ends up affecting our work, then we do have people that are very understanding because they have come to know our work ethic and they know if we're missing something that it's pretty serious as to why we're missing it. And right. we just take our job very seriously. Right. And so I think that's the thing of not only not having favorites and putting in that quality, but take your job seriously. If you want to be great at what you do and if you want people to trust you in what you do, you have to take your job very seriously for that to happen. If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled and I look forward to speaking with you. So I, I'm very proud, and we've talked about that a few times, of just proud of ourselves for taking the rest, even though it wasn't easy, because it that's the thing, is it just was pushing off the inevitable. And my mom was texting me and just like, I hope you guys are resting today, like later into the next week. And I was like, we're doing the best we can, but like we can't just take days off work. Like we, it's just being pushed off, and it's more work on the day we come back. Um, and so we come into Monday, and we're like, okay, we spent two days like in bed slash on a couch doing nothing. Like I think the most that we did was go on a walk. And outside of that, we just laid the whole entire day. 
And then Monday comes and we get up and we're like, we, we got to get some work done. And I wake up and I take a shower. And most of you guys know if you take a shower, that's like your sign. You're, you're up for the day. I took a shower and it was a long shower because it was hard to even be standing up. And I went back to bed. <laughs> I was like, I need to get back in bed for a little bit because I still feel absolutely miserable right now. And at that point, Alex was already at his desk and like cranking away at stuff. And I was like, how does he not feel this bad? Am I just being soft? And then I kind of like get down, I get some work done. I kind of touch base with him, still doesn't have an appetite. And I think it was around like 2 p.m. that day. And you're like, I have to call it. I need to go back to sleep. Yeah, I was I was running off of a excessive amount of caffeine mm -hmm. um, and drinking drank way too much coffee to try to get myself to feel better type situation, which I can assure you um, only prolongs the inevitable. You're just like, you're just delaying the onset of feeling more crappy. So if you, if you uh, use the caffeine to have energy from like 6 a.m. to noon, then you're just compounding how crappy you feel from noon on type mm -hmm. situation rather than just feeling crappy the whole day and, and letting your body rest and all those things. So always keep that in mind when you are, um, you know, overextending yourself on a day of, of work or anything like that. You're always just like taking from the next day type situation. And so the more that you can like find the balance, whether that be when you're healthy or when you're unhealthy, like yeah. being sick, um, is extremely important because it's, it's always just a give and take from an energy balance standpoint. Yeah. And so that day we kind of like, we did what we could do. And then we were just like, okay, the day's over. Like we can't really give any more. And that's how it went. Like the rest of the week was just like, we give as much as we can in this day. And there were definitely days that we overshot. <laughs> um, but I think that we did a, a decently good job, especially given our track record of taking the days that we needed or taking the time and knowing. And just this year as a whole, and we've talked about this of like being a lot better at knowing when to call it. And knowing, like, I don't have anything left to give that's going to be quality instead of sitting here forcing myself to work. Let me just call it, truly take rest, and then come back and kill it when I do get to it. And I think that we did. And I was very proud of you for being able to, like, work and be like, okay, now I literally don't have anything. I need to go and rest and take care of myself. Well, I think the timeline's getting a little rushed here because I didn't, I don't think I did work that first Monday. You, you did for those few hours, and then you were like, I'm done for the day. Okay. But it was rough. We didn't do a ton. I, yeah, I, I, I don't recall working those first couple of days. Mm. Um, I, don't, I don't think so. Okay, that could be incredible. Um, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's one of those things that I get, it's, it's a crummy situation when you are on the mend from being sick and you know trying to just get back to normalcy and you find yourself in a scenario where you are um, only really working at about a 50% capacity and you have you know deadlines that need to be met, you have uh, individuals who are counting on you and those different factors and so you already don't feel good and then you're falling behind on these deadlines, you're falling behind on you know people who are, are counting on you type situation. It's a very challenging you know mental place to be in and I think that that's one of the more difficult aspects of being sick is the um, mental conversation that you're having with yourself every single day. And that's one of the things that I know for myself over the last you know three or four days of where I've truly felt you know back to 90 to 100 um, percent, I've noticed of like, oh my gosh, I was making it way worse on myself because of how I was talking to myself mm -hmm. and like the belittlement I was um, you know talking to myself in of like, the expectations I was placing on myself and them just not being, they were just outlandish in terms of what I was truly capable of in the capacity that I was in. And so I, I've, I have clients now who are sick and I'm like, just focus on the mental aspect, like talk to yourself kindly, be graceful, like give yourself grace and really allow for yourself to understand where you're at and what you're really capable of. And don't put these silly expectations on yourself of, okay, well, if I was at a hundred percent, I could do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, you're not at a hundred percent. You're at half of that. So half the work that you could you know do in that time frame, and that be the expectation for yourself. And, and I'm sure that if you can provide yourself more of a, a mental clarity or mental positivity in that time frame, I would imagine that I would have felt better sooner or at least just felt better 
emotionally and mentally in that time frame if it have, if I would have given myself more grace. Yeah, and I think part of that was just like we didn't know how sick we really were. And so there's like a gift and a curse to that and something that I admire about our, both of us is that we are going to push and we're going to like really question ourselves of are you doing enough and are you showing up in the way that you want? And I love that about us, but it often it bites us in the butt yeah. when we push, 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 and we don't take that time. And so I know for me personally, I was kind of in this place of like, I, I'm never sick. I, I There's no way I'm this sick. It's mental. Just get up and get your stuff done. And I would get up and be like, let's go. And I... I can't explain how awful I felt. Like there were days where I was like, there's no way I'm going to make it to this meeting. There's no way I can make it throughout this day without taking a nap. And I do not take naps during the day. Like that's so out of the norm for me. There's no way I can like have normal energy again to like get anything done. And we didn't want to go out into the public and get other people sick. So we were just kind of going off our symptoms. We messaged our doctor and he was like, yeah, it's very, very likely that you have the flu. Just make sure that you are taking like Advil, ibuprofen. He told us what we should personally take um, and being able to focus on resting and like getting fluids in and feeling better. But it was a struggle of the kind of being like, I'm probably not that sick and then being hit with like, oh my gosh, I am that sick and having to rewire how I talk to myself or what I should be doing in a day and being able to kind of have that internal conversation. Yeah, it was it was a mental cluster because you'd feel better for maybe a couple hours after mm -hmm. you, like you'd wake up and you'd feel a little bit better. And so you're like, okay, I'm, I'm getting, I'm on the mend. And then it would very quickly after just a few hours, go back to feeling pretty bad. You take like a nap or, or get some medication in and you'd be like, okay, I'm starting to feel a little bit better. That medication starts to wear off. You're starting to get a little bit more tired, start to feel crappy again. So it was, it was a kind of a roller coaster or waves to ride and trying to maximize those, you know, small two or three hour windows mm -hmm. of feeling okay. <laughs> um, and trying to get as much done as you could with whatever energy you had type scenario. And so, um, yeah, what a, a wild couple of weeks it was. Yeah. And one last thing that I'll mention about that is that the first day that Alex was just like alone in the basement, he was like, I was so bored. Like I, I just so wanted bored. you. He was like, not that I wanted you sick, but I wanted you down there with me. So I wasn't just sitting there. And he was kind of like going between trying to sleep and just having an awful day that I felt so bad that he was having. And then the next day I was like, well, at least if we're both sick, we get to like hang out together. And <laughs> it wasn't really no. hanging out. It wasn't quality time. We both felt so miserable and we couldn't like even like focus on watching something we cared about watching or it wasn't like this, oh, we finally get to relax. It was like this time that we would need to relax to show up for ourselves. We're actually just in a lot of pain and not being able to like spend quality time with one another and then it was like oh now you got to get back to work but you still haven't had the time that you need um so that was definitely difficult so then once we and we also called off uh filming for the whole week which was very hard for us because we're on a pretty uh, it is flexible but rigid at the same time um of like we need to film to get everything out the podcast the youtube videos all of that jazz and we ended up not posting was it, was it last week of not posting yeah. any videos because we just knew that there was no point in overextending ourselves to get those up when they weren't going to be the quality that we wanted them to be. Um, and it was just going to be to say that we got them up and we stayed consistent. And that was a, a hard call, I'll say, at least for myself to go ahead and make that. But I think it was the best call to be able to make. Yeah, I, I think that one thing just, you know, going off on a side tangent from a social media standpoint for us this year, it was something where we pushed really hard to like get out of our comfort zone, to uh, challenge ourselves to be consistent and to get videos up on a very regular schedule, um, posting consistently on uh, Instagram and TikTok daily and all that stuff. And I think that we went through that phase and I feel like I feel confident 
in doing that. Like mm-hmm. I, I don't, I don't feel the pressure that I once did. I don't feel the the judgment or, or what have you that went along with that when I first started or when we first started doing it. Um, and and now I think that we kind of pivot more so into maybe a little bit less frequent, but a greater potential of of quality because we've gotten more repetitions under our belt. And I think that the quality of the content is only going to continue to accelerate. And so my big focus, and I think that that was kind of part of that as well, is just focusing on how can this be the absolute best information to put out instead of it being like, well, we have to post a video today. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think that that's going to be something really cool for us moving forward here. It's not that we weren't focused on quality prior. Um, I think that there's just a greater emphasis as well as understanding because of the repetitions that we've gotten in um, of like what we do well, what we need to continue to work on, what we um, have done well so far and, and uh, what's, you know, gone over well with you all as well. Um, And, you know, pushing forward with those data points collected in mind. Yeah. So we had obviously, like we talked about all those miserable days of being sick. And so now we want to be able to talk about kind of what we did, um, not only while we are sick to navigate through and really push to feel better, but what we've done since then, because like Alex said, it's just been a few days that we've started to feel closer to a hundred percent. Um, because, uh, also, like Alex said, of when he lost that weight that quickly, it wasn't a physique that he was super happy with or loved being able to look at. And that's something that people don't think about when they get sick. But like you are going to lose glycogen, especially if you're not eating, you're not going to be moving around as much, your immune system is fighting for you. And so you might have some inflammation. So during this time, whether you're a client of ours or not, I really want you to realize like the scale is not going to be a metric that's going to be extremely helpful for you. It might be helpful to read the variables, but it's not going to be an accurate number of like, this is exactly where I'm at right now. Um, As well as like the way you're physique looks, the more that you can have that like foresight of if I just give myself a few days, things will get back in line. That'll be so helpful instead of trying to take some drastic measure because all that we've done is really focusing on rest and recovery, getting water in, getting our appetites back, and just moving our bodies the way that we can. So yes, like we talked about, there were some days that were up and down. And on some of the days we were like, oh, let's train. We feel better. And I the first day that we trained, we were just in there together. I think we maybe trained for 20 minutes and we just moved. That was our only goal was just like move your body and kind of feel out how you're feeling as a whole. Yeah. I think that, um, it was something where, I mean, I, up until the last few days, that was, it's been almost two and a half weeks since we started being sick. Um, just the last few days, I felt like, um, strength is getting close to where it was prior to being sick, but muscular endurance wise, I'm still not there. Um, so it's, it's one of those things that, um, you know, backing off of the volume and, and not sitting there comparing yourself to the log book of like, well, before I got sick, I was at this, you know, weight utilizing for this exercise. Cause like for my scenario, I was in the same training before I got sick to now I'm obviously in the same training. Um, now that I'm coming out of being sick and I can tell you the numbers in my logbook from before to now are different. And I can't let that be like, oh my gosh, I lost so much muscle when I was sick. Mm -hmm. It's not that I lost muscle. It's literally just a matter of having adequate uh, water and glycogen as well as just getting back into the routine of training consistently. Um, And my immune system getting back to 100%, my central nervous system not being so overworked, trying to repair everything that it was. Um, And so it's, it's a matter of, again, giving yourself grace and then being able to go in and have sessions that are not a hundred percent. And I know that that is super hard. It's not easy to go in and have a 60% effort, a 50% effort training session because you feel like you're just going through the motions, which you are. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's good to get your body moving. It's good to get back and start to build momentum, pushing forward and understand that you're just utilizing. This is one of your many building blocks to you getting back to a hundred percent. And you have to use these blocks. It's not going to be a matter of like, all right, I'm back to being healthy. I'm jumping right right back to where I once was, you've got to build yourself back up to that. And if you look at it in that aspect and focus again, as we talk about many times on the podcast of focusing on the journey or the, um, you know, the actions that you're taking on a day-to-day basis and not the outcome, this is something that is, is so, so beneficial when you are sick, because I've seen this from clients who have gotten sick and they get so frustrated because they were very sick with the flu or what have you. And then it, it takes them maybe a month 
to like just let themselves have those 50 to 60% sessions because they just keep fighting against themselves. They train once and they're like, I can't move. Mm -hmm. I I train legs, but my arms, I can't pick up my arms. My whole body is aching. I'm having body aches again. And they're just like kind of sick and they're just like kind of forcing themselves into it. And so it's just a matter of of being willing to have those sub optimal or sub maximal sessions um, to allow for yourself to get back to a hundred percent as quickly as possible. Yeah. And if you're my client, you've definitely heard me say of like, just go ahead and take the rest now. I don't care if it's four or five days, but that's going to be so much better than having like a two or three week low grade sickness because you haven't given yourself time to truly repair and get back to it. And it's hard when you're in a place where you're trying to gain momentum or you are excited about your training because before we both got sick, like literally my check-in beforehand, it was like, okay, we're going into a new training phase. We have a new structure. We're getting after it. And I was like, let's go. And then I get sick. And then it was like, okay, let's go. I want to train. And I had to... like remind myself, like just do a little bit less right now so you can feel better sooner. And so I had days like I had that first day that we just trained for like 20 minutes and I had planned to train a day or two later. And when it got to the time, I was just like, I don't have it in me. And that's hard because again, I have that internal conversation with myself of, do you not have it in you? Or are you just not motivated right now? And uh, like, Flipping that discipline switch is something I always try to do, but I was so glad I was able to have an honest conversation and be like, Sue, this isn't you not being disciplined. This is you realizing that you need rest. And so I'm so glad on the days that I had planned, it was in the calendar, I was going to train and I was just like, I don't have it in me and I didn't train. And so not only did I go over a week without training, I had that one kind of ish session back. And then I didn't really get back to training until a few days ago. And just like Alex said, that muscular endurance as a whole is still kind of getting back into the swing of things. And I started a new phase and I made sure I made a note in my training log. This is coming off being sick. Like these are not your full weights that you're trying to do. Like it's okay that this is less. It's going to go up throughout the phase. And even just having that reminder, even if I've already said it in my head, having it on the paper is so helpful for me personally just to remind myself like this isn't full out you're moving your body don't focus on this has to be better and better focus on what you need to do to get better and better and so that's been my main focus throughout this is move your body in the way that feels the best listen when your body is asking for rest and I haven't had a 100% session yet back yeah I mean when do you plan on getting back to that point Um, I would say like in the next, like next week, I would say that I'm going to be good to go a hundred percent. This week is going to be pretty close to a hundred percent. Um, I would say like between 80 and 90%, um, because I felt really good the past few days, like starting on Friday of this past week, I started to feel really normal again. And then over the weekend, I had some good training sessions. Um, and I'm excited to train today and I, I feel so much better. And a big thing is I'm all also taking inventory of like how I've done with my food because I can't expect myself to go 100% if I haven't been eating. And so that was the other thing I had to remind myself of, of even when I was starting to feel better, of recognizing like you just went a week under eating and like you can feel it in your body that you've been under eating. And then starting to finally have the nausea leave and getting an appetite back, that was my main focus of how can I get my calories back up and the Past two days, um, I've been pretty close to getting my calories spot on. And today I have a feeling I will get them spot on. And so that's the other thing of like, I'm kind of putting parameters in place as well as things I have to reach before I can go on to the next thing. So it's like, you need at least three days of eating all of your calories before you can even try to push to that 100% because that's not fair to yourself. Or again, I don't want to get sick again. I don't want to like my body's right at the point 
point where it's almost healing and then I like overdo it and push it back down. I really want to be aware of that as a whole. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. Cool. Yeah, I think that um, when we look at it from a client standpoint and how we address it um, within just a season of being sick, and this is you know a time of year where a lot of clients are sick, and it's going to be very dependent um, on how sick they are, how things go while they're sick, and, and those different factors. So there's not like a um, a concrete approach, you know, coming out of, of being sick. Uh, but I guess there, there are a few, um, like centerpieces or pillars to, uh, that aspect of, of coming back after being sick of how to approach your training, how to approach your nutrition and those different factors. And so, um, things that we really hone in on is prioritizing sleep still like that being the big, big driver for us, um, for the client, because I know it's, it's, you want to get right back into training. You want to get back into having great training sessions, but none of that's going to happen uh, without your sleep. And then once sleep is in alignment, then we focus very heavily on nutrition. If we can do both those at the same time, it's a perfect you know equation. Um, but when we look at it from a food standpoint, are we able to get in adequate calories? Are we, are we back to where we were before you got sick? Um, and how do we feel? How do, how do you feel after your meals? Do you feel like excessively full? Do you feel lethargic? Do you feel energetic? Do you feel light on your feet? Those different factors. You want to make sure that you have a good understanding of how you're feeling. Cause if you're feel if you're still feeling lethargic, if you feel like you're having to stuff yourself just to get back to the base calories, I would say you're still not in a position to train you. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you're in a place where energy is good, you feel light on your feet, feel like food's digesting well, then at that point now we're starting to look at training. We've got sleep in alignment. We've got our nutrition into alignment. Hydration has been something that we've been prioritizing while you were sick anyway, so that doesn't change. Um, and then at that point going in and probably starting roughly around, you know, 50 to 60% of what your load was for those movements prior to you getting sick. Um, and, and, and all of our hope is that um, that session's far too easy. Mm -hmm. It feels amazing. It's too easy for you. Um, but we need to get a good basis because you could go in there and those 50 to 60% loads could still feel heavy. Mm -hmm. um, you may feel like, oh my gosh, going into set three or set four, I'm, I'm running out of steam. I have no muscular endurance. It's not that the weight is heavy. It just feels like my muscles can't contract. Um, and that's totally fine. And you've got to have that conversation with your coach and, and being flexible as well as being uh, optimal communication is paramount uh, following this because if you just try to force yourself to like, well, this is what's constructed for me. I need to do it. It's like, well, you're just you know, prolonging being sick as well as not getting the results that we both want from a coach to client standpoint. So it's like, you're wasting both our times. Yeah. Um, and that's not worth it at all. And so um, having that opportunity of being very vocal and having that communication is big and then slowly increasing loads back up, whether that be in a week's time, you're able to, to quickly titrate things up, maybe two weeks, it could be even three weeks, just depending on how sick you were. It's not a race. It's a, more so a matter of how can I get to 100% in the most efficient manner possible. And that's going to look different for different people depending on how sick they were. Yeah. And with Alex saying, like, if you're thinking this is the plan, I need to follow it, that plan was put in place before you were sick. And so it's actually not the plan that's based on the circumstances that you're personally in. So if you're holding yourself to that same exact circumstance and situation, that's not fair. And that's not realistic, because that's not the situation that you are in. And so it also goes into like, we laid around and we we're on a, on a bed or in a couch all day, we weren't getting a ton of blood flow our muscles weren't being worked. And so going in and moving, a lot of that can just be like, I'm getting circulation back to my whole body. I'm feeling my body move again and what it feels like to brace my body when I'm not just bracing while I'm coughing up a storm because I'm sick. And so you really need to be able to take into consideration, like you just went from laying in a bed all day to now you're thinking you're going to be 100% in the gym. That's not how it works. And so give yourself that space. Take the time to 
make it better and focus on these aspects and you will feel better and things will come back into line. That first day where I finally got in the gym after feeling miserable, I looked in the mirror and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm a noodle. I have no she muscle. She looks so skinny. I have a picture <laughs> on my phone. She looks crazy skinny. I was literally like, it looks like I'm in prep right now. It looks like I've been dieting and yeah. it's just not a great look for me. I don't look healthy. That's for sure. And I was kind of like, I don't, I don't like this at all. And it made me want to like go and push and be like, let me get all my muscle back and all of this. And it's like, it, no, just give yourself a week or two, Sue, and you'll you'll look in the mirror and you'll feel the same way you did. But we can't have these instant things. We can't just wish our body to be better. We need to take care of it to get to that point. Yeah. And I think that one of the things as you come off being sick or time away from the gym in general is that the nutrient partitioning aspect of getting carbohydrates and water and salt being pushed into the muscle bellies because you're consistently training you were without that aspect of things. And I think that people underestimate the intelligence of the the human body in general, that it's like, okay, I don't need to push these uh, tools to this area. It's not being as, as used as it once was. I have other functions in the body that are going to potentially need these resources. Thus, I'm just gonna have them circulate subcutaneously. And it looks, makes you look like a soggy sock. <laughs> um, and so going in and having those sessions where you are just moving your body and just getting a little bit of muscle contractions and those different factors is going to help with the uh, body image aspect of things because that nutrient partitioning is going to improve again, because you're going to have those signaling aspects of having those uh, muscle contractions, a little bit of muscle breakdown, probably not when you're training at 50%, but as you get more into training, that signaling is going to improve. And now those nutrients are going to be pushed to the muscle bellies. Again, you're like, oh my gosh, I regained all my tissue. It's like, no, you didn't. You just regained some of that glycogen store in the water and sodium and those different aspects. And so understanding that is very important, even coming from, you know, two coaches that have a very good understanding of what I just said, it was still mentally challenging for mm -hmm. me. I was, I was, I, I got a sweatshirt on right now. Why do you think I don't have a t-shirt on <laughs> on right this moment? I can't believe she's in a tank top um, type situation. And so it's, well, it's still, self -tanner helps, okay. <laughs> it's one of those things that, you know, I still struggle with that. Even with me knowing exactly what's going on, I can still look at myself in the mirror and be like, you fucking bitch. You are, you are so small. He was like, my legs look so small. I, I can't know. even. I caught, I caught a terrible, I was at our massage therapist and. Taylor, uh, you're the best. Yeah. Taylor, shout out Taylor at Grandview Pro. She's the best. You guys can't book with her. She's constantly booked out. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and we get priority. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I was there and I was getting ready for my massage and I caught a terrible, she has a mirror like in front of the table and I caught a terrible angle of my leg that it looked like my leg had shrunk every bit of 50%. <laughs> And I came home that day after that massage and I told Sue, I said, I'm either going to die tomorrow or I'm going to train legs. Like I have to train tomorrow. And I went out there and trained, had a decent session, uh -huh. um, definitely over overreach. Like I, I went against everything that I've told you guys to do this entire episode. Um, but that angle to, I, it didn't matter. <laughs> I caught that angle and could not believe what my leg looked like. Yes. Um, I can assure you that that angle was just what it was. My legs are fine. <laughs> <laughs> I can also assure you and him. Yeah, um, that my legs are fine. And so, but that was a, you know, a funny part of it. And a, a, a real aspect mm -hmm. of all this is that um, even, you know, like I said, even knowing those things, I still struggled with it. Mm -hmm. And what, I mean, I even said to you when I was like in the bathroom and I looked in the mirror, I said something like, I've been trying to just like not focus on my body, not look in the mirror because I know if I just give myself a week or I give myself two weeks, I'm going to look fine. And I just need to not focus on it right now. And it helped that I wasn't focusing on it because I did feel so bad at first that it was like, I can't even like think about like getting up to, to have any of my energy be consumed with how I look. I just need to like lay here and have energy to like possibly go get food if something sounds good. Yeah. And and I also, another um, key point of just, you know, my experience with this is that my, one of my check-in uh, with my coach was in the middle of me being sick. I looked like that soggy sock that I keep alluding to. And so I, I've had, you know, clients who still send their check-in when they've been sick like that. And it's 
I mean, that is mental warfare for yourself to see yourself in pictures, screenshot them, send them and like document this moment mm-hmm. where it's like from a coaching standpoint, yes, it probably shows me like how sick you really are of like, oh my gosh, you're really inflamed. Like you really need to take some rest, but you can tell me those things. Mm-hmm. And I trust, like, I know that my clients aren't just going to, um, you know, gas themselves up of being more sick. Like nobody wants to have that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's one of those things that if you already know that you don't look how you normally look, you're sick, you know you're inflamed, um, you look significantly different, don't take the pictures. Just tell your coach, hey, I've been under the weather, I've got a fever, I've got the flu, I'm not taking pictures this week, I'm just gonna focus on hydrating, I'm gonna focus on feeling better, do you have any other recommendations for me? And leave it at that. Don't force yourself to go through the whole check-in process just because that's what you normally do. Mm -hmm. You're in a not normal state. speak up and just have conversation. Um, it's, you know, that's, that's helpful. Again, a lot of this comes down to the mental conversations that you're having with yourself when you are sick. We've talked about it multiple times throughout this episode. Um, and I, I feel as though that, you know, that's 50% of the battle. If you can conquer, uh, your mind and and the time that you are sick, um, although you may stay sick, the mentality and how you're approaching it, how your, your viewpoint is, um, being in a better position is, is huge. Yeah. And so a few other things that we did, I mentioned some of them, but I'll kind of list them all out is the humidifier. Having that was extremely helpful while sick. So wherever we were, whether it was in the bed or in the basement, we brought that with us and made sure that it was full and going. We also had tea multiple times, green tea, and we had the throat coat tea, which was very helpful and just being able to have our throats feel better. Um, And we really focused on rest, as we've said, and then really focused on getting any kind of hydration hydration in. So lots and lots of water, as well as we had different coconut waters and just different fluids all together, including those teas to really make sure that we are feeling our best. We had elderberry in place. So we had like the throat lozenges, as well as like the little tabs that you could put on your tongue. And then the medicine that we personally felt that was the most beneficial was the Alka-Seltzer Plus cold and flu. And it's the one that you drop into the the fizzy one. That was like my second or third. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I felt like it really helped me. Um, and then Advil cold and flu. That was the that superstar. One's a goat. That was I the superstar of like when I was still sick and trying to work, it would give me like a solid two hours. Mm-hmm. And I know that that sounds ridiculous, but it was amazing to have <laughs> the two hours of just like feeling okay to be able to work at least that little bit of time. Mm-hmm. And so uh, that was really the only one. The, the Alka Seltzer was was helpful. Yeah. Um, but the Advil cold and flu was probably the one that was like 100%. Yeah. And then Benadryl plus congestion. So like the Benadryl plus, that one was a great was one um, to be able to have in place. So we had those in place and then we still prioritize supplements during this time. So we just had like a core that we really made sure we had in place. So we had vitamin C, NAC, vitamin D, magnesium, fish oil. Um, and then we had cordies in place, especially for the evening of just being able to really make sure rest was prioritized prioritized more than anything? Are there any supplements that I left out? Um, if you have a, a service in your area that's willing to come to the house and do a, an, an NAC drip or like an immune drip um, IV, then I would highly, highly encourage it. We don't have one that comes to the house here. We have a place that you go to and get those IV drips um, administered to you. But I didn't feel overly comfortable with how sick I was to just go out in public and like be around other people and put other people at risk. Um, that seemed like such a soft r- response. And and yeah, but it's true. It is we true. felt so bad. We I didn't want to give it to anyone yeah. else. I was like I would feel miserable. Yeah, I mean, I had, we told Miguel not to come to the yeah, house. And, yeah, I had a I had to go to the doctor for something, and I wore a mask in. And they're like, oh, do you need me to wear a mask? And I was like, oh, I'm just like kind of on the edge of sickness. And I just didn't want to get anyone else sick because I don't want anyone to have this right now. Yeah. And that kind of leads me into one of the like struggles of recording episodes like this. And the podcast has really pushed me out of my comfort zone to do it because I just feel like episodes like this is just us bitching, <laughs> just like complaining. And that's like, oh bro, it's gosh. not it's not that. And I know we're just sharing our experience as well as giving information of like how to improve these scenarios and, and what to look out for, um, how to approach training after and all that. And I know that those are super helpful, but I always feel like I'm just sitting here complaining. And so I despise that aspect of things. And I'm sure that 
I, well, I hope that none of you listening are feeling that way, but um, that's one of the hurdles like for me uh, mentally that I have to kind of get over within these episodes because I know they are very helpful. Yes, I they are very helpful. Um, and then as far as food, as we've mentioned that we struggle with lap, lack of appetite and nausea. So Alex was dealing with lack of appetite like as soon as it all hit him. Yeah, I and- went. I went five or six days eating sub a thousand calories. Yeah, easily sub a thousand, yeah. maybe sub 500. I had to like force feed any kind of calories I could get. Anytime he said anything sounded good, I was like, I will make or get you anything if you will eat it. Um, but thankfully at the beginning, I still had an appetite. So if you do have an appetite, even if you're thinking I'm not moving, I'm not getting my steps and I'm not training, still eat food. I was literally trying to get as much food in as possible because I eat either knew, one, my appetite might change, but two, getting food in is not only going to help me feel better and have energy, but it's going to help my immune system have that to be able to fend off the sickness and for me to feel better sooner. And so I'm so glad that I was able to get in food because then the tides did turn for me pretty quickly where I couldn't even think about food. And in those instances, and I mean this because my dad was sick during the same time and I, I was talking to him and he was like, well, I went and got something bad. I got like McDonald's. And I was like, no, that's perfect. Like go and get McDonald's. I wouldn't call it perfect. Well, yeah, not perfect. But I was like, no, that's fine. Go and get McDonald's because if you're not eating all day, he was like, I didn't eat all day. And the only thing that sounded good was McDonald's. I was like, then go eat McDonald's. And we did the same thing of, okay, if the only thing that sounds good is pizza, I'm ordering a pizza. If this food sounds good in this instant, even if it doesn't have a good macronutrient breakdown, I'm going to eat it. It was anything that sounded good that I could get calories in, I would eat. And that was the focus. Yeah. From a a client standpoint, one of the things we really drive home is just having that calorie goal and hoping that we can get there. Mm -hmm. Um, As much as I would love for you to still hit your protein and still hit your macros, like I've been sick before. I'm Mm -hmm. also a human. You're not just talking to an AI robot on the (laughs) other end of the emails and text and all those things. Um, So I get, you know, being sick and and being able to just get calories in, as Sue has alluded to, um, is going to be the most important thing. Yeah. And if you like some things that we did outside of like just going and grabbing any food that sounded good was how can I get the most bang for my buck within these calories? And so I made some smoothies during that time or like cream of rice and just trying to pile in as much as we could to get in that and not focusing so much on that breakdown. And please, please, please do not intentionally bring your food down when you're sick. Mm -hmm. I I think that that's one of the the biggest misconceptions is that like for you to get healthy, we've got to get calories in place and understanding like where all of your calories are being expended, a large portion of that on a day-to-day basis, just your resting metabolic rate. And so with that being the, the case, as well as your central nervous system being kind of in an overdrive, trying to get you back to being healthy, your heart rate's going to be elevated throughout the day. Um, body temperature is varying. And so you've got a lot of those different factors. And so keeping your calories where they were, um, is probably going to be a good idea. I would even, uh, go to say that maybe even a little bit more food could be advantageous in terms of getting you as healthy as soon as possible. Now going on a complete bender where you're not having any issue with your appetite. You just got a little bit of a headache and of, uh, like, yeah. you Being know, like I should eat more. I food. should. Yeah. That's Alex not what I'm saying. Me, yeah. For me to feel my best. Yeah. If you got a little bit of a headache eat. cause you've been staring at the screen for too long. (laughs) It's not a time for you to be like, I need to go to McDonald's and have three Big Macs and two large fries and uh, two McFlurries. Like, that's not what I'm saying. Yeah. But we were going like the whole day without eating any food. And so it was like Chick-fil-A. If that sounds good, I'm going to go get it. Yeah. And and probably part of the the crummy part of all that is that I would say that something sounded good mm-hmm. and then I'd sit in front of it and then I'm like, ah, this doesn't sound good at all, actually. Like I look at the food and I my, lose my appetite entirely. And so that was another part of it. And then I would feel terrible because Sue would, Sue also didn't feel well, um, as we've talked about. And so <laughs> yeah. um, when I would have her, when she would make food for me, I would feel terrible because I'd sit down and be like, oh my gosh, like, ah, this does not look good to me at all. <laughs> 
and I'd try to force feed myself. And I was like, this is making me more sick type situation. Yeah. Um, so that was a, you know, a hurdle to get well, over. I'm sure the only thing I was frustrated with was the fact that you weren't eating, not because I made it, but just because I knew how grumpy, because those first few days when I did have an appetite, you were like, how do you have any energy yeah. at all? And I was like, I've been eating. Like, that's the difference is yeah. like, I've had food in me and you've had nothing in you. So how can you expect yourself to have any energy? Yeah. And it was one of those things that the only time that I felt good was like the 30 minutes after I woke up from a nap. So I was like, if I don't eat, I'll just keep falling asleep. Yeah. My energy is so trash. I won't get up out of bed anyway. <laughs> that did not work. I, I don't advise that. <laughs> so get in food where you can and just try to get in as many calories. And like we've said, not pushing 100% in the gym, prioritizing sleep, resting, getting fluids in. And within those moments that you're looking at your physique or your trash talking yourself because you haven't been training as hard or you haven't been hitting every mat metric, take a second and recognize the circumstance and then realize what the game plan needs to be. And that's where it can be very helpful to kind of have that like, okay, I'm going to go like 50 to 60% in the gym, this and then this, because then it's a plan that you're following. So it doesn't feel like I'm doing less than what I'm supposed to be doing. It feels like this is the plan I'm supposed to be following because that's what's been laid out. And so I know I always try to do that for my clients. And I know you do as well of reminding them this is the new plan. Don't hold yourself to the old plan. And let's get better because that's going to make everyone feel better. Right. So yeah, that was the that was us being sick. <laughs> that was a lot of what we went through. And I hope that you don't have to experience it yourself. But if you did, hopefully you're able to take some tips from this. Is there anything else that you think is going to be helpful for people to have if they're either going through this or if they're on the upswing or what that looks like? I would say first, if you haven't done it already and you're still listening to this episode, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the podcast. Um we have lots of good stuff on the horizon. You need to see it. Um, in terms of things that, uh, I don't think so. I think that uh, we covered everything. I think that uh, I, the only thing that maybe hasn't been verbalized but has been uh, insinuated through a lot of this is just patience. Have patience with yourself um, and try not to, to rush the process because you're probably just prolonging it in the long haul. Yeah. So what percentage are you at right now? I'd say I'm pretty close to 100. Yeah, yeah. I feel good. I, I think that uh, training yesterday was probably the best training that I've had. Mm -hmm. um, I would agree with that personally. Yeah, it was the best training, probably the most energy that I had. Um, I think that my outlook over the past couple of days has been the best. So normally when my outlook shifts in that manner, because I was in pretty a pretty dumpy spot you know, during all that, um, I know that I'm on the mend pretty on the high end for sure. What yeah. about you? I would say I'm pretty close as well. I was like, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday of last week that Miguel came in and said he was at like 98%. Mm -hmm. And I was Miguel was sick as well, guys. It, yeah. was a, it was a different version, we believe, but he was also sick. <laughs> yeah, only for a few days, thankfully. I'm so glad that he was because I, again, would not wish this upon anyone. And he said something like, I'm probably like 98% right now. I was blown and I'm away. sitting there, I'm like, 98. I feel like 58. Like, are you kidding me right now? Uh, I, so I feel like literally on the seventh on Friday, the tides turn for me. And I have been like kissing the ground of just like having normal energy because that Thursday before Friday, I thought, am I ever going to feel normal again? Yeah. So I, I'm pretty close. I would say between like 90 to 95 and I'm feeling better each day and happier each day as a whole because I feel better. So good deal. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure that you subscribe, leave a review, and we'll catch you in the next one.